Sjedinje države imaju međunarodni program preko kojeg se njihovi mladi političari upoznaju sa problemima u svijetu. Kroz tu nestranačku inicijativu imena American Council of Young Political Leaders su nam došli danas u studio i do gradonačelnica grada Southgate, Denise Diaz, i Tyler Forpagel, zastupnik u Wisconsin State Assembly. Hello, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about your trip here? How long have you been here and what have you learned so far? Yeah, so um, we've been, uh, we're here with a group called ACYPL, that stands for uh, American Council of Young Political Leaders. So it's made up of uh, bipartisan Republicans and Democrats uh, who have an interest in politics. And we come from all over the, the country, uh, California, Tennessee, Wisconsin, um, in an effort to better understand different Uh, countries uh, in the world. This is a, a program among other supporters is supported by the US State Department and uh, has been in existence for a number of years and does something along the lines of 25 uh, uh, trips like this um, a year. And um, it, what really, did you see so far? Uh, we, we've been here in Zagreb. Uh, we got here uh, about three days ago, and uh, uh, today is our, our last day before heading off to uh, Hungary is also part of our, our exchange. You know, this program is absolutely great. Our first um, just excursion was uh, through Invisible Zagreb, which was through the eyes of a homeless a person that was once a homeless person, Mili. And that was like a just absolutely, just for me, um, getting to see the raw and the realness of what could happen, right? And it was also getting to know my colleagues because we just recently met the day, day prior. Uh, we've been to the presidential home. We met with, uh, we also met earlier today, we were at the um, US Embassy to get to know a little bit of, of what's going on. And what we've learned is the beauty of Croatia, how welcoming you have all been. Uh, the food is delicious. Uh, the community just absolutely opens their arms to us. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your trip uh, here and in Hungary, of course. Uh, let's uh, talk about U.S. politics. I mean, the whole world is watching what's happening currently in Washington, uh, D.C. We are entering the election year in USA. Right. Would you say is the country more divided now than it was in 2016, or is it the same, or is it less? If I could chime in, um, myself, I am a daughter of immigrants who immigrated from Mexico. I am a female. I am a huge environmental pioneer. Um, I do feel, it, especially since I'm com I come from California, from Los Angeles, I do see a division out there, unfortunately. A lot is at stake for us. Um, and I hope the sleeping giant wakes up. And that sleepy giant is going to be the minority groups. And I think they got a taste and they're concerned. Um, just in, in Los Angeles, I'm going to tell you, what did we change? We now have 11 days of voting. So that's not going to give us no excuse not to come out to vote. Um, and how was it before? It was just one day. It was just the Tuesday that we could go out to vote. And that was it. It was from 8 a.m. Uh, polls open and they close at 8 p.m. So now we have 11 days and we could vote anywhere in the county. So if you're currently working, you have no excuse. You're working in a certain city. You could go out and vote. You pop up online. You see where your nearest polling place is. So now folks have absolutely no excuse. Also, now that once you turn 18 years old, you're automatically registered to vote. Mr. Forpagel, yeah, and uh, is the country more divided? Well, I would I would answer it a little differently. Um, I run as a Republican, I uh, so I'm actually on the ballot every two years in Wisconsin. Um, and one of the things that I think would surprise a lot of people, and surprises a lot of people uh, in the United States, is I think there's a lot more that we can agree on um, than what people see. Yes, there's hot button issues, and those are the ones that are always being covered. But for example, uh, in the Wisconsin Legislature, uh, in the Assembly, uh, last session. 93% of our bills were passed on a bipartisan basis. Um, so really, at the end of the day, I think um, the goal is to make America the best place that it can be, or your state, or your city. There's just different ways that we have about going to get there. Um, and we'll f figure that out. But um, uh, no, I think there's a, there's a lot. And um, I'll maybe circle it back to the program. I've had a great experience uh, through this ACYPL program to learn um, from 
my colleagues who maybe are on the other side of the aisle talk uh, in a more relaxed setting um, about issues and uh, try and understand uh, things, uh, where they come from, and, and uh, hopefully they're uh, learning a little bit from me too. Okay, yeah, you are friends here, but let's say the, <laughs> the pictures we uh, get from Congress, uh, we saw just a couple of days ago, uh, right. congressmen storming uh, through the impeachment inquiry, they said they want to be public, the Republican congressmen, and then uh, we see all these uh, sound bites every day, different kind of sound bites. So let me ask you now, you said there is hot button issues, okay, but is now the impeachment inquiry like sur supersedes all. Does it uh, gun control, healthcare, whatever, that's now here and impeachment inquiry is here and that is the hot button issue currently? Well, it is uh, a very important uh, thing. It doesn't happen all that often. I mean, it, uh, the last time it happened was more than 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, it's uh, so it is. Uh, very important and uh, should have a, uh, a place in the news. And of course, uh, something like that will be partisan because uh, it's two different uh, political parties who are um, you know, taking an opportunity to, to, to go after each other uh, on that. Uh, will obviously, it be that's that important. Be will it be that important for the voters as the other hot button issues or more important? Is somebody going to vote, vote for Trump or against Trump just because of this impeachment inquiry? Or they're still concerned about health care and other stuff? And they say, well, impeachment is one thing and uh, this is my guy for gun control. That's why I'm going to vote for him. You know, it's going to vary from the audience, right? For me, the fact that he says that uh, climate change does not exist, yet uh, Pacific Palisades, which is not too far from me, went through this disastrous situation a few days ago, fires that we never have seen. We had an entire city, paradise, completely destroyed and 300 folks out there just vanish, you know? Or when it comes, me, my, my parents are hardworking. We, they have a small business, they employ 50 folks. They pay their taxes. You know, they, we, we're three daughters, we have higher education. I'm the, first, I'm the youngest, I'm the millennial. You know, I'm gonna be the first mayor, uh, Latina mayor and youngest. So. The rhetoric he's spreading out there is absolutely untrue of who uh, the community is. And um, it's going to vary from what audience I, I, are you speaking to, right? Is it an environmentalist? Is it a woman? That's like how offensive the tweets he's put out there. Me as a woman, right? Or is it the fact that I live in a heavily undocumented community where my neighboring city elected the very first two commissioners are undocumented and after that we received so many Republicans and folks against that. You know, our city hall chambers had, were under attack so it's going to vary from audience to audience, like I mentioned. Today. And the rhetoric uh, he is spreading, uh, he's spreading mostly through Twitter. So we selected right. a couple of uh, tweets from Donald Trump uh, just this week. Uh, so uh, I'm going to ask you uh, to comment uh, about the tweets that are going to appear soon on our wall. So this is a tweet for a couple a day ago where he uh, talks about uh, Republicans and uh, Democrats. Uh, so I'm going to ask you uh, to comment uh, these uh, tweets. They are calling, uh, watch out for them. They are human scum concerning the Democrats. Those tweets are quite alarming for me, um, for a lack of better words. I, I, you know, as the leader of my country that I have so much respect for and I give everything back to, it's, it's quite embarrassing, um, the language he uses. It's, um, you know, that's what I could say. Well, and um, <laughs> I think that, um, would you, did you ever imagine that you would have a president who calls other people human scum? Well, uh, no, <laughs> but uh, I never really thought that Twitter or uh, things like that would be a direct medium to, to, to communicate with people. Um, this is why we have frequent elections in the, the United States. I mean, people can uh, judge for themselves and have an opportunity to go vote. And uh, frankly, I think a lot of uh, he's had some very positive uh, policy reforms 
and they're overshadowed by uh, the tweets. So in some cases, um, I think he's sort of taking away from the positive stories and the positive things that that have happened. Um, but again, that's why uh, we have frequent elections is so people can uh, decide and uh, make their opinion known. And um, and and I'm sure this for for some people is a uh, reason for them to come out and vote. Concerning uh, Democrats, uh, are Democrats going to vote uh, who is uh, who has uh, the most chance of uh, beating Trump, or are they going to vote, vote uh, who is best for our country? Who's best for our country, but who I see top two making it will be Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. Okay, uh, we selected a couple of more tweets uh, concerning Congresswoman Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez and uh, his reply uh, to uh, her tweets. Uh, I think uh, the tweets will be appearing shortly. So in these tweets, uh, he uh, writes, AOC is a wake job. Your comment again. Go ahead. You know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, you know, it's being diplomatic, showing respect, no matter what political party you are from. Um, it's uh, disheartening to see my president, um, you know, use those words. It's quite alarming, uh, the decision making behind that. And also we see a tweet where he mentions civil war. Uh, I mean, for me personally, I th uh, personally, I think there is too much on both sides of the aisle. Uh, well, this is the, not on both sides. I, Civil war is just mentioned here. I, I didn't see any other. I, I mean, specifically on this. Politician mentioning civil war. Yes, but I mean, it, maybe has he taken it to a different level? Of course, but um, I, I do hope that we can get at some point get back to uh, again a time where we can figure out what are the issues we can right. uh, work on you know we all have families at the end of the day um, that's a, with my colleagues who are Democrats um, we prefer to talk about our families and the things that uh, join us as, as Americans um, and uh, I, and I try, you know, as a as an elected official, to to emulate or uh, put out that um, that that feeling in everything I do. Um, you know, I I am not all over Facebook and Twitter doing these sorts of things, but um, that's because you know that's who I am. I think that's who most of America is, uh, and it's still a great place uh, and uh, a, a great place to be and a great people to represent. One thing we journalists also have in common with American journalists is being uh, called uh, fake news. It's happening all over the world. It's <laughs> happening in the United States. It's <laughs> happening also here in Europe, Croatia also uh, especially. So how do you see a politician uh, screaming uh, death sentences to uh, journalists, uh, fake news, fake news to something that is clearly not fake news? Yeah, this has is been it dangerous. I mean, it, uh, one of the things of having the the freedom of press is um, you know anybody can be a blogger, right, and uh, share their opinions now on on Twitter and uh, in Facebook, um, and there there can be fake news. I don't think that uh, most of the the or that the mainstream uh, evening news is and programs like this. Um, it, that's that's their intention, but um, you know you you look at uh, on Facebook and you see people. There's an old say, uh, a saying. Well, it's on the internet, so it must be true. Obviously, that's not the case. I think people should um, really kind of dig into the the facts of what's going on and and do a better job of educating themselves. I completely agree with my colleague. It's uh, we have a responsibility to do our own research, right? Um, I think that's where some folks lack that, and they just believe anything that's out there. Okay, but is it dangerous? Is it dangerous that kind of behavior? Well, I think it's uh, it is trying to undermine certain institutions that we've uh, had as you know up until recently. Um, you know the, the newspapers and uh, TV and things like that. If you actually look back uh, in American history, uh, most of the early newspapers were um, they call them uh, yellow bills, I think, and they were written by the parties. Uh, so. I mean, I guess you could say that they were directly trying to influence and put out um, 
you know, one partisan slant or, or another. Um, and since then, we've sort of uh, gotten to where the media needs to be the arbiter of truth or uh, something like that. But now I, I think we're maybe swinging, the pendulum might be swinging back to where um, there's more of a partisan uh, divide in, in certain different medias. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it used to be that uh, America is a standard. What uh, American politicians do, that's like a standard for the rest of the world. So you have uh, these kind of presidents that uh, were before and uh, nobody could imagine that they would say something like that, like uh, you said, and especially considering fake news thing. So now you have uh, European politicians seeing uh, American president doing this and uh, maybe they think for themselves, oh, well, he is doing it, maybe it's okay for now to do it also. Is that dangerous? Yes, absolutely. It is. It's, it's spreading. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's getting folks just concerned, confused. Um, it, it is. Uh, and just uh, for the end, I would like to ask you uh, who will be uh, next or uh, will Trump uh, stay American president? Who will be American next president? Like I mentioned to you, that sleeping giant is going to wake up and you know, it's time for our country of the United States to have a female leader and with hopes that it will be Elizabeth Warren. Okay, Elizabeth Warren, you? Uh, I think it'll be very similar to the last election. I think uh, he won't win the popular vote, but I think he'll uh, have a more narrow edge and pre uh, President Trump will uh, win in November by less than he did last time. Well, thank you very much both for this uh, conversation. It was nice having you here. Thank you. Thank you very pleasure. much for having us. Thank you.